Hey everybody, I've been gone for a minute, but I am back. I had surgery on my Achilles tendon, which completely ruptured. So I took some time off of recording because it really wasn't all that feasible. This week I am using these Alicia Michelle stickers, this set from Cactus Paper Co., and those really cute stamps from Social Paper Plan. I'll link them all up for you below. We're going to do things exactly the same way we've always done them. Nothing is new despite my lapse in being here and filming with you. I've been keeping up and I've been doing things exactly the same. So if you've been happy with that before, yay! All right, so we are putting the one of the points and you can see I used that giant pumpkin head. It was so cute and layered it with just a plain box and some cotton or not cotton candy, candy corn pieces, five little elements to be exact. And then we added the lower right anchor point as well. And we have the cute little Mickey head. We have the background and then the text also. Now over on the left hand side, we're doing something very similar. So I have that sort of torn looking washi. It's not meant to be part of the anchor specifically. So, but it also works that way as well. I wanted it to cover the whole thing, you know, be kind of like washi, right? The castle and then that little text, which I layered with the circle. So that's the three. You can see my visual triangle right there. And now I'm going to go back and add boxes for the activities for the week. I'm doing the same thing that I've always done. So if you're new here, I go ahead and I add all of the plans and activities that I know that I have for the week and I put those down right away. So the rest of the week comes as it does. So, you know, Monday, these things happened. I write them down and so on and so forth. But at the beginning of the week, I do write the things that I know that I already have going for me. Now, one of those things is that I do that for is because, so say for example, something gets canceled. I like to notate that versus not adding it at all. Like say baseball practice gets canceled, for example. I want to notate that it was scheduled, but it got canceled versus pretending like it was just never on the calendar. That may not work for everyone, but it's part of what I really like for whatever reason. I guess just to keep track of those types of things, like, you know, if a coach flakes out or something like that. Maybe that doesn't happen to you guys. I don't know. Anyway, I am alternating by writing directly on the page and then also in the boxes. And you can see that I'm adding the highlighter first. But what I will say is that since my surgery, I have been using these Sharpie pens and if you let them dry, the highlighter does not smear. So I could write and then highlight, but old habits die hard. And because of the way that I plan most of the time, I don't need to highlight after, although sometimes I do. And sometimes that's how I found out, but I am just adding those things after. I like the extra pop of color that it gives and it makes each individual entry in the planner seem special and noteworthy. And that's part of the reason that I do this memory planner. So it seems like I might as well go ahead and add those things. Now, you can see I'm using lots and lots of basic elements from that Cactus Paper Co. kit. This shop, these, this is a new shop to me. This is the first time I'm using the stickers. They really seem to be working quite well. The communication from the store leaves a little bit to be desired, but I'm not going to hold them against them yet because I got everything I ordered. It's a great value and some really versatile kits. So I'm going to leave that right there. You take what you want from that. Now, some of these boxes are really fun. I like that they're not as wide as the columns. It definitely uh, helps to shake up the overall design and make it feel a little bit more eclectic, which you know is a favorite technique of mine. Now look at down there at the bottom. I used one of those big happy planner boxes and layered it with sort of that alcohol ink sticker. I just absolutely love that. It makes it kind of stand out. And if you want to know the truth, it was a pretty important event anyway, as my son, two weeks after I did, my son had surgery on his hand because he broke a finger. And so that sort of highlights his getting his cast off and all of that crazy, right? I mean, so, you know, I took two months off, I know from videos, but it was, it was quite the two months. I'm not going to lie. All right. So now we're starting on Monday and I'm just adding one thing with some brush lettering. These are some Pentel 
I believe they're called sign touch or touch sign. I can't remember off the top of my head pens. I love them. They are my most favorite for writing in my planner. However, the thing that you will learn is that everybody is different in terms of what pen they prefer for brush lettering. So what, what works for me might not work for you, but I like this one because the brush is super small. And so I can write small in my planner. All right, so we're on to Monday and I am just notating different to-do list items, different things that popped up, different activities that we did throughout the week that were just like, oh yeah, today I'm going to do this, even though it wasn't something that was planned in advance. And I really love this idea because what it does for me is it lets me have the overview at the week at the end of what my weeks truly looked like. And since I use this as a memory keeping tool, as much as I do as an organization tool, planning that is, not this specific planner, because this specific planner is a memory keeping tool for me. Now I'm going to use some more of these super cute stamps because I had absolutely nothing else to write on Wednesday. And so I am going to stamp these adorable ghosts, two of them, and I'm going to tilt them just a little bit so they look a little bit more the illusion of flying. Now, if you've been here for a minute, you know that I've been cleaning my baby, my stamps with baby wipes for the past like 50 years. However, I used to a really long time ago, like 15 to 20 years ago, use some spray and a, a scrubber. And I decided, you know what, why did I ever stop that? So I bought another one and guess what? Spoiler alert, I'm really loving it. So you're probably going to see more of this in the future. I'm not saying it's new or revolutionary. In fact, it is not. Like I said, I was doing this 15 or 20 years ago, but switched to baby wipes. But I've been having some problem with lint on baby wipes and it's driving me crazy. So this decided, I decided this was a good tool to try again. I mean, it didn't really hurt anything. It was like $15 or something to give it a go and I'm enjoying it. I'll link up these that I'm using. There are a wide variety of however, that you could use instead. Now look at these sheets. How cute are they? There's lots of great clip art on here. I am not going to use all of it because it doesn't really fit the theme, but it's very adorable and there's no reason I wouldn't use it. It's just that I'm picking out pieces that go well with the Disneyland stickers and stamps. Now this week's layout does have a real candy corn color theme to it. It's definitely very, very yellow and orange and white, and obviously just the tiniest bit of black as well. Now we're gonna stamp these two main street buildings. These are both also from Social Paper Plan, and I am stamping these right next to that cluster because it talks about trick-or-treating, down Main Street and so I figured I would use a couple of the Main Street buildings to sort of tie that all together for my decorative elements right there. Now you can see this scrubber, it's literally just a standalone scrubber. You can buy ones that come in plastic casing. I just thought this one seemed fine and it's got like a rough surface on top and so it helps get in those grooves of cleaning out the stamps. But again, remember, if you've been here long enough to know, you know you don't have to clean your stamps either. You can just stamp the excess off on a piece of scratch paper and that works as well. It's really personal preference and the project, like it depends on the project that you're doing. Now look how fun this is all turning out. It's really coming together quite well. Now you can see here that booklet, those happy planner, happy sorry, colorful boxes. I was getting ahead of myself. I had like five or six that were about half empty. And so what I did was over my, when I was off my foot for two months, one of the days I went through and I reorganized all my sticker books. So I made a black, I made a silver and gold, I made a pinks and reds, blues and greens. And now I just have those colors in one book and it's working out marvelously for me. If you are interested in seeing all of them just to get a better idea of how I do it, let me know in the comments below and I will show you in a future video how I broke those apart. I am really hoping to hit the end of the year hard and create a lot of videos for you all. I've been missing you and really missing planning and decorative planning throughout here. So I figured, you know what, let's just video all the things or record all of the things. Am I right? 
All right, so we are finishing up right here. There is not a whole lot left just to add those last little bits for Sunday. And then I'm also going to go ahead and add all of the different icons as well. Cause as you can see, I didn't add any of those as I was going, I wanted to kind of do it all at once. And so I just left those open, but I am still doing the same planning techniques that I've done all throughout the week, which is alternating between writing on the paper itself and then writing on the stickers. So that's basically it for me today. Thanks so much guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing you again really soon.